over the last few months, we've been living through difficult times with the pandemic of 2020 and our preoccupations have been around health, looking after ourselves, looking after those around us, looking after the institutions and structures of our society. Sometimes we forget that we're also living through a moment of history. Throughout the history series, we've been looking at other moments and other great things that have happened in Liverpool, captured in the archives of the parish church. And I've been thinking about how the pandemic will be recorded for future generations. When we look back, perhaps the greatest event or tragedy to befall this church itself was the collapse of the tower in 1810. And I came to our archives and these are some of the archives from which we've been drawing during this series, to look at how that event has been captured. Here are the baptism registers for the parish church of St Peter. Remember there were two parish churches, and this baptism register started in 1810, and here on the first page we can see a very brief reference in very small lettering. It just says in the corner here, Old Church Spire fell down. And that's it. Just captured in those few simple words. Surprisingly, even the vestry minutes did not record the collapse of the tower in February 1810, presumably because the event was so obvious that it didn't need including. So this is the first reference in the minutes in September of that year when they began to look at plans for rebuilding, followed by another meeting in December when the vestry began to investigate the original cause of the collapse and whether some remedial work was required. After the falling of the tower, undoubtedly the next major event to before this building was the bombing in 1940 and then in 1941. The people who were there here at that time made a more conscious effort to record for the archive what was going on. And we have here a parish diary which was kept in that time until the new building was opened. And we have here an account at the beginning of the bombing of the church. And then as we go through the years, they managed to document exactly how the life of the church continued through those dark times, including the institution of a new rector in the ruins. And as we go through, we find the other major events of the time also coming up as the uh, new foundations were laid, the bells were put in, and other national events came in as well, such as the death of the king and the coronation of the new Queen. So how will our archives capture this moment of history in which we're living? Well looking in this section of our archives I can see we've already stored away um, one document and that is, this is a notice which we put on our doors when we had to close for public worship and this was on the main doors of the church for some months before eventually we were able to open up again. Leaving this in our archives allows future generations to ask the questions about what happened now and look for further clues at how Liverpool Parish Church coped in this time. The detailed record of the pandemic will be in the minutes of the Parochial Church Council. The PCC has continued its oversight over the life and activities of the Parish Church and this report, submitted to the Council, shows the strategic priorities drawn up to guide the Church's activities during the pandemic. The report goes on to measure the outputs against the priorities. Perhaps the most illustrative way of showing what happened in 2020 will be in our Register of Services. Here in the sacristy, where we prepare for all acts of worship, like every church, we have a register of services where everything has been recorded since 1856. This is the latest volume of our register. And when we turn to the pages in March, when it all started, we can see that we have annotated to show what was happening. Here on Tuesday the 17th of March, we've written in, Public worship is suspended by order of the Archbishops of Canterbury and York. And just a week later, on the 23rd of March, we record the closing of all churches in the diocese. And then as the pages go on, we can see that we kept our witness of prayer in the parish going, but using different means. We've recorded 
every act of morning prayer or every Eucharist and saying by video conference so that those in future generations will be able to see the way in which we continued to keep life and witness to Jesus Christ going in the centre of Liverpool. And at the top of every page is written, no public worship in the Church of England. As we turn through the many months in which we weren't able to hold worship in church, we come eventually to Sunday the 5th of July, where we've written at the top, public worship resumes strict rules on distancing in force. And against the parish Eucharist, we've got a note as well that there was live streaming of the service. The Register of Services is a good place to stop our exploration of the archives because it's a moment that looks on. It's an ongoing book, most of whose pages are blank. But you've seen in the last 10 weeks of episodes what a wealth of material we have, and we really only scratched the surface. But as we stand here in the sacristy, we can see here the array of history of my predecessors as rector of Liverpool sweep around us. Over the last 800 years, the parish church has been at the heart of Liverpool as the town has grown into today's thriving city. The unique place of the church in the life of the city means that for centuries to come, we shall be able to read the history of the city through the prism of the archives of her oldest surviving institution.